Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me OK? Thank you so much for joining me at this unearthly hour. 8.45 after that really nice party last night. Was everyone there for that? Did you have a good time? Awesome. See, I know some of you are still waking up. I can tell. The energy level's just right. OK. So my name's Russ Scammell. I'm the product manager with the 2D team, who are based mainly out of Singapore. And um, I'd like to share some of the um, work that we've been doing around 2D world building in Unity. But before we get started, I want to find out a little bit more about who's in the room. So can I get a show of hands? Who are the artists in the room? Artists, all right, represent. Uh, designers, any game designers? Nice, some of the same hands went up, I noticed. Um, how about programmers? There we go. These are the people. OK, programmers, lovely. Any producers? The secret heroes behind every project. Producers, thank you. And how many of you are new to Unity? This is your first time. This is your trying it out. Lovely. OK, welcome. Um, how many of you are new to 2D games? As in, like, you've never made one before. Anyone? Never made one before. How many of you have made a 2D game? At some point, you've made one. OK, cool. And how many of you have shipped one? You've put one out in the market. That's a good proportion. I'm loving it. OK. So today, I want to talk about 2D world building. Um, because with 2017.2, we've released the first of our major world building tools. And that's tile map. So what is this tile map? It's fundamentally a 2D tool for making grid-based layout. Um, now, what, the way we've implemented it in Unity is um, very flexible, very powerful, and I want to talk about some of that. But we're not going to spend too much time in slides. I'm going to spend a lot of time in Unity showing you how the tool works. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about import. How do you get these 2D tiles that you've made and you know, your art tools? How do you get them into Unity? It's very simple. You've got your art tool. You import it into Unity as a sprite, right? We've all used sprites. And then in Unity, it's a really simple process for changing that into a tile. Now, why did we do it this way? Why did we make a tile? Because we want to make an intermediate asset that's not just a sprite in the scene. And I'll talk more about that later. OK, um, where should we go? Here we go. So the intermediate asset that we call a tile in Unity actually holds a reference to a sprite. And we have extra data around that. So we have stuff like the transform and the color of that tile so that we can do some interesting things with tiles in Unity. So let's uh, jump in. Let's open the first scene here. Uh, this will get going. OK. And I want to show you, this is what we're going to start with, a really simple scene in Unity. We've got this really cheesy character walking around. The motion's a bit strange because he's got a follow cam on him, and there's no background at the moment, OK? So what we want to do is we want to start making the tiles that we're going to use to paint the background. OK. So typically, um, can you guys see all that OK? Is that OK? It's clear? All right, I won't need to zoom in. So you can just come in here, and you can create a tile. OK? So this is one way of doing it. It's kind of the slow way. You'd come in here somewhere, and you'd call it my tile, something like this. Nope, not my tie. Gosh, that's not right. My tile, OK? And then you'd drag a sprite into that. So maybe I want to drag this one in there. OK? And that's a tile. So as you can see, we've got the sprite, the color, and some other data around that. Now, um, imagine if you had to import 1,000 of these. This would be pretty tedious. So we're not going to do it that way. Let's get rid of that. I want to talk about the tile palette, which is this window we see over here. And you can access that via window tile palette. Okay. Now, the tile palette is a way for you to view and manage palettes of tiles or collections of tiles which you then want to paint onto the tile map in the scene. And as you look at the top here, you can see all the different painting tools. And at the moment, we don't have a palette. So let's start off by creating one. Let's create a new palette. I'm going to call it, with great creativity, my palette. OK, and I'm going to create it here. OK, tile palettes. 
There we go. Now, the tile palette is just like that, right? It's in your project. It's a way for you to collect all of these tiles. When we've done this, you can see this drop down here has been populated with my tile. So all the tile palettes that you create in your project are going to be in that drop down. Now, if I wanted to make a lot of tiles all at once from my sprites, it's as simple as this. So I'm going to drag all of these temple brick basic tiles, sorry, uh, temple brick basic sprites. I'm going to drag them into the tile palette, like so. OK, and then I choose a folder. I choose this one here. And we just generate a whole bunch of tile assets. OK, so you're good to go. Now, you can do this with single sprites, right? Single uh, sprites that you've imported as a single texture, or these sprites that you've imported and you've sliced them up as multiple sprites, OK? So we're moving along really fast here. Let's uh, come into the scene, and we can create a tile map in here, right? And the way you do that, so I'm just going to show you this process here, and then we're going to jump to a scene where I've got one set up for painting. And the way you make a tile map is you go to Create 2D Object Tile Map. Yep. Now, when you make a tile map, the first thing you get is a grid parent object. This is the grid. And that defines the cell size and the gap between the cells. So you can do tiles of different sizes. And you can also use multiple layers of tile maps. So we're going to see this in action. And as a child of that, we have the actual tile map component, the game object with the tile map component, and all the information uh, to do with that. Um, included with that is the tile map renderer, of course. Otherwise, we wouldn't see a thing. OK, great. So let's see a scene where we've set up a few tile maps, and I'll show you how we're going to paint in them. OK, so let's go to another scene, another project, I mean. And uh, don't save. OK, so here you can see I've, um, I've added a few more tiles to the tile map. And what I want to do here is I want to start painting. right? And this is, this is really where, where the tile map starts to show its strengths. OK, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set down a, a floor. And then I'm going to put down some walls and then some plants on top of that. And I want to show you here how that original grid that we had now has two tile maps, a floor and a walls tile map. And we're using the order in layer here to sort them. Okay, So one is going to be drawn on top of the other. And then finally, in a separate grid, I've got the plants tile map, which is even higher up. Now, really simple. I'm going to come in here to the tile palette. I'm going to choose the floor tile map. This is the active tile map, very important. That's going to be the target of your painting. And then I'll choose the paintbrush here, and I'll just drag, I'll just grab a pick, uh, sorry, a tile from the tile palette, and off we go. Right? So we're painting. And that's a little bit slow. I want to move a little bit faster. So I can use a box fill. Right? Now, let's say I want, see all these nice tiles, there's some variety there. I want to use that variety. So I can drag. I can pick a range of tiles and then come over here to the box fill. And then I can just fill that up like that. Cool. Right, so now let's put down some walls. OK, um, let's drag these walls here. And I'm going to paint those in. OK, and then I'm going to uh, rotate this one and rotate this one. So I'm using the square bracket shortcut key here to rotate. Um, all of this will be in the manual later if you need a reference. Yes? Good catch. OK. So let's go there. Let's go to the walls. That's much better, right? Um, now I've got these corners, unfortunately, on the floor. So let's just ignore that. <laughs> we'll come to that later. Thank you. And we're just going to keep going. And fairly quickly here, you can see we've started to uh, outline the level. OK, great. And then finally, on the plants, we're going to click on this here. And I'm just going to start putting down some plants. And again, I need to choose the active tile map. Otherwise, I'm going to be overriding stuff. And fairly quickly there, we've got a level, right? 
So I think this is really great that you can paint in the scene. I think this is, this is a really powerful aspect. Um, unfortunately, if I hit play now, and I want to walk my character around, this is really fun. Hey, but he can get outside. That's no good. Right, we don't want to allow that, unless it's some secret exit from your level. So, okay, let's look at what we can do about getting colliders. Okay, so, do I have a project for this? Yes, okay. Now, there's a couple of things I want to say about colliders, which is why I made a special project for it. Um, and there's two kind of different ways that you normally want to work with colliders. So let's look at this first one. So here we can see the walls have been defined by a completely filled grid, right? This is a full cell. So this is fine. We can still use a collision, uh, we can use a collider on this. And the way we do that is we come up to the grid here. And let's take a look at the walls tile map. And we add a component called Talmap Collider 2D. So let's look at our colliders. Here we are, Talmap Collider 2D. And if you can see the green boxes, this is where we've added all of the colliders. So if I were to hit play now, start walking around, there we go, we have collision. All right? So that's pretty cool. Um, but very often in the design of a tile, in the design of the tile itself, you don't want to collide with the entire grid, right? So let's see an example of this. If we go to this one. Now, it wouldn't be right if the player collided with the grid because he'd still be a few pixels away from the edge, right? What looks like the edge here. So let's take a look at what we need to do to set this up. So this is the temple stone edged tiles. And um, these are the ones that we've painted there. And if we look over here in the inspector, we can see one of the aspects of the tile is the collider type. And in this case, it's a collider type of sprite. The one we saw earlier was a collider type of grid, this one. Now, the difference is with the sprites, if I were to hit, if I were to go to the uh, walls and I add a component here, tile map collider 2D, now, it's a little bit subtle, but you can see that the green lines are now just on the edges. They're right on the edges. They're just there. And the reason for this is if we look at the sprite itself, and we open that up in the sprite editor, and we go to our physics shape, we can see that each of these sprites has a physics shape that has been defined for the collider that we want to use in the tile map. So we take this physics shape data and we add that as the collider. Okay. And then finally, one of the things you'll probably want to do with collision is you want to use um, a composite collider 2D. Because right now you have all these little rectangles along the edge, and if your character collider is a, is a box, you might snag against those edges if there's a slight difference, right? So what we want to do is we want to change this. We want to add one more thing here, which is the composite collider 2D. And I'm going to show you a little. I'm going to show you the the funny way of doing this first, and then we'll do it right. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that tile map collider 2D is being used by the composite, right? So the composite collider 2D, if you haven't used it before works with some of the other colliders in 2D to kind of combine the collision shapes and simplify them, optimize them. So we're going to do that now. And now this thing has been merged into a single collision shape. It's again, not very clear on these projectors, but that's OK. This is now a single collision shape. Uh, if I were to hit play now, so this is what I mean by the funny way of doing this. If I walk this guy against the edge, Boom, you can see the whole thing is a collider. Now, of course, we don't want our walls to fly away from us like this. So we need to make one little change here. When you add a composite collider 2D, you want to change the body type from dynamic to static for this case, unless your game is one where you can collide with the walls and they move around, right? So if I hit play now, there we go. Perfect. It's exactly what we wanted. 
So we've got multi, multiple tile maps. We've got the ability to uh, collide. Great. OK. So we've been seeing some fairly basic tiles here. We're just placing sprites down. You know, nothing, nothing too special yet. What I want to show you is uh, custom tiles, and then after that, custom brushes. And the idea with custom tiles is that you can extend the tile class and then make it do interesting things. So let's take a look at some examples to, um, to show you how this stuff comes together. OK, so let's look at um, scriptable tiles first. OK, so the first example, First example I want to look at is um, animation, right? So very often you're making a you're making a game and you want to make animated tiles, right? So let's open up this scene here, and great, you can imagine what's going to happen there. I think uh, let's take a look at what we've done here. We've got a tile asset, right? Like the, all the other tile assets that we've made, but these are custom tiles. Okay, I'll show you the script. So what we've done here is we've extended the tile base. And without getting into too much detail, we're getting tile animation data out of this. right? And based on that tile animation data, we can then move through a sequence of sprites to create that illusion of motion. Um, all of these things can be, you can, make a, you can make a custom editor for them. And this is really important because you want to make these custom tiles look good um, if you're a programmer in your team and you're providing these custom tiles for your designers, you want to make sure that that stuff looks good for them. And um, this is what the custom tile looks like for animate tile. So you just drag in a bunch of sprites, and then you set up a maximum speed or a minimum speed and a start time. And if we hit play on this, we get some animated tiles, right? Cool. Now, let's extend this idea a bit further. So this is a pipeline tile. The idea behind these um, is they're based on a rule, right? Where we make a decision about, based on what your neighbors are, what your neighboring tiles are, what can we do? What shall we do? What shall we change about uh, this tile? So if we look in the code here, we're using something called refresh tile, this one. And refresh tile allows you to kind of do things, tests when you're about to when you're about to draw the tile, and then make some decisions about, like in this case, the neighboring tiles. This is just one example of using a refresh tile. It doesn't only have to be used this way, but this is a good example. So I'm going to come in here and let's get rid of this. But you can see these are kind of dynamic tiles, right? And if we look at the we look at the the uh, asset itself. We're kind of defining what tile to put down based on what we see. So here I'm going to go to the uh, pipeline tiles. I'm going to grab one of these, and I'm just going to start painting. And you can see this thing is kind of smart, right? It kind of knows what tile to put down. Cool? Now, all of these um, examples that you're seeing today, we're providing these as a bunch of packages so that you can learn from, from these examples or just use them outright, if that's OK. Um, or you can extend them and take the general idea and make stuff that works for your games. OK, we're going to look at one more, uh, which is also a kind of a smart tile. Um, but this is a little bit more involved. And this is the terrain tile. So a terrain tile has a whole bunch of rules to do with neighbors in eight different directions, right? So let's take a look at the UI for this. Here we go. So we have different uh, sides, different, uh, how many different sides, how many adjacent sides do we have, stuff like that. Um, and when you define all of those, I won't dig into the code for this one. It's a little bit long. Uh, but the files will be provided. We can come over here, and let's just jump in and start painting a terrain tile. OK, let's drag this one. And then let's go into the right tile map. OK. And we can see that's really quite fun. Right, so you can imagine setting up your levels really quickly with this. 
Um, you can imagine laying out hundreds of levels, and it's actually quite a, quite a pleasant and tactile experience. OK. So these are the animated tiles. Uh, sorry, these are the custom tiles. The other concept, which I want to talk to you about, is custom brushes. Now, so far, all we've been using is, and you, maybe you notice this area at the bottom of the tile palette, this is where the brushes are. And all we've been using is a default brush, right? And a default brush simply places the sprite, colors it white, and then does a standard transform on it. Uh, let's take a look at what else you can do. So I'm going to show you a simple example. And then we're going to open up a game where they've done some really good work with, uh, with custom brushes. And we can learn from that. OK. So this is scriptable brushes. Now, with scriptable brushes, the basic idea is that, and I'll open up the code first so we can see what we do. The basic idea is that we want to come in here and we want to extend grid brush. This is the basic class. And we want to kind of override each of those painting actions. Okay? So we want to do something different when you paint. We want to do something different when you do a box fill. We want to do something different when we erase, and so on. Okay? All we've been doing so far is just placing things and removing things. So this one is a tint brush. And again, you can define a custom editor for these. So for example, if I come down here and I look at the default brush, we now have two extra ones. This one is called the simple tint brush. And you can define a custom editor for this space down here. The more advanced tint brush actually has some text that I put in, and maybe you may want to do more stuff there. We'll see some examples of that later. Now, the tint brush, as the name implies, just paints color, right? We're not going to paint anything else. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to choose a color. OK, something nice and obvious. Uh, yeah, green was good. And then I'm coming over here to the tile map in the scene. Okay, let's just get that. Let's work on the floor. And then I can just paint right on the floor. Okay, so I'm keeping the original sprite. I'm keeping everything else. I'm just changing the colors here. So this is really useful if you want to reuse a bunch of assets and you want to get some variety out of it. Green for a swamp level, blue for a snow level, that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, that's really cool, really powerful. The main difference between these two brushes, the uh, tint, the simple tint and the tint brush, this is uh, for you coders out there. In the custom editor, I've overridden things like the paint inspector GUI as well as the preview. And this is kind of important if you're going to start tinting things a funny color because you might want to see a preview of that before you put it down. Right? So now you can actually see a preview that this is going to be red. And of course, this works with all the tools that you've got up here, as long as you've overridden them. Right? Cool. OK. So we've got a few more minutes. I want to open up a project that has made some really uh, good use of, default of the uh, custom brushes and tiles. Uh, and this is RoboDash. Again, this is a project that um, we've provided to you and that you can, you can open up and learn from. Um, let's take a look at that. Uh, where are we? Okay. So this is RoboDash. Let's take a look at it in action. It's quite a pretty game. And if you hit play on this, you can see. So this is the game, right? And the idea is you're, tr you're trying to escape this, you're trying to escape this level. Some horrible person has stuck you in here, and you've got to get out. Oh, will I even get past the first obstacle? Probably not. Oh, forget it. OK. We could be here all day. So the idea is that. We've, we've built this level out of tile map, and there's a bunch of obstacles here, which obviously stopped me, 
right? Um, we've got lasers, we've got teleporters, we've got spawn points, we've got door key um, combinations, we have all sorts of things. So we're going to play around with this a little bit. Um, now, all of these have been built with custom tiles and brushes. So let's take a look at the very first one, which is actually my favorite. If I make a new scene here, this section of the default brush, this is the default brush, has been overridden so that if the scene detects that there is nothing else in the scene, it's a blank scene, you don't have all the stuff you need for initialization, we give you a little button, right, to initialize the scene. So imagine if every time you wanted to make a new scene in Unity, you could do this. Just go initialize scene, and we set up a level, and we set up a start and an end, and we're good. Right? And if I hit play now, that was a blank scene just 10 seconds ago. Right? I can already start um, prototyping. Right? I, can, I get some idea, okay, this is the first bit. Good. Now, that's a brush. The second thing is also a brush. And this is the level brush. This is for painting the floor plan itself. Now, what they've done here is, instead of just painting to a single tile map, when you paint, you paint to multiple tile maps at once, and those tile maps have custom tiles on them that pick up on corners and edges in the right way. So let's take a look at painting. So I'm going to, uh, yeah, that's fine. Let's take a paintbrush here, and let's just start going. See that? So it's putting down the floors, it's putting down the walls, if you see a red square, that means we don't have a tile that fits that particular definition of edges. So we just cover that, okay? And you can see that they've also filled up this area out here and kind of faded it out with something like a tint brush, yeah? So that's really cool. So you can imagine, again, laying out levels like this. See how fast that is? Done, right, and you've got a level. That's really cool. Um, so let's make, a, let's make this starting space a little bit bigger because I'm going to do some nasty things to this robot. Okay, so the next thing is we want to put down some gameplay. So what they've done here is they've taken the idea of the default brush and instead of just placing a tile, we're gonna put down some game objects as well. So this is the laser brush. I'm gonna grab the paint tool here and this this brush has a memory of the last thing it put down. So I'm gonna click once, and then I'm gonna click again, and it's gonna make a link between the two. So I'm gonna put one laser turret here, one laser turret here, and then if I click away, okay, let's just click away somewhere, okay. And then I'm gonna come back in and then do it again. Okay, and now we have some lasers. And all we did there was just paint right in the scene. Aha, but I see a way around. Oh, okay, good. So you can see we're, we're painting not just aesthetics, but functionality, right? And this is a really powerful idea. Um, let's do a couple more. Got a little bit more time. Um, this one is, can be useful. Doors and keys. So maybe you want to paint a door over here, and then you want to put the key over here. And this way, when I hit play, and again, I'm going to sneak around the back because I'm just no good at this, and that opens the door, right? And there we go. Shall I do one more? These are kind of fun, aren't they? Okay, let's do one more. Let's get rid of the lasers, and let's get rid of the doors. And let's jump in and do a rail turret. I quite like this. So this combines quite a few concepts. Um, let's go in here and with the first click, we're going to uh, draw a rail. Okay, this is the first time I'm drawing. So it's gonna go whoop. This looks a bit like that pipeline tile we were doing earlier. So I'm gonna draw this rail, great. And the second click is gonna put down kind of turrets or robotic turrets on that rail. And if I hit play. So you can see they're firing at me and they're moving around. 
Hooray, but I still win somehow. Okay, cool. So there you go. Um, this is the idea of the custom brush being taken to a really, uh, to, you know, a very um, good place in terms of designing games and kind of separating that idea between the game design, the level design, and actually having to code all that stuff all the time. So the way I imagine it being used is, you know, you'd have a discussion between your programmers and your designers, and you go, hey, you know what, we really need these kind of design tools. And then they'll jump in and go, okay, let's make these brushes. And then the, the idea is that the levels can be populated really quickly. You can iterate on level design without having to go deep into code every time you want to make a change. Okay, so finally, gosh, I, I realize I skipped over all my slides, which is good. Right, because we want to see stuff in Unity. Um, now, I want to make sure that everyone has access to everything that we've seen today. So this is probably the most important slide. Um, and it's uh, resources for you to get going after you leave this session, right? So please take a look at all of these. Every time we, um, we release experimental builds, uh, every time we work on new, uh, new features in Unity, we put them up in this forum. And we invite people to try them out early because we're trying to make features that you guys can use, right? That are useful for your teams, that are useful for 2D developers. Uh, we make the tools, but we make them for you. So please jump in, grab the tools, tell us if we're doing it right, tell us if we're doing it wrong, tell us if we can do it better. Um, and all the brushes and everything that you saw today are available as extras and as tech demos. And these are living repositories. They're going to increase in size as we go because we get requests from people all the time. Someone asked about a brick breaking game the other day. How would you do that with tile map? Go to tech demos and you'll find out. So there's one there. And the entire RoboDash demo game project is available on that link. Um, that's really fun to dig through. They do some really cool stuff in that. So check that out. Has everyone taken a photo? Are we good? And on that note, thank you very much, everyone. Happy world building in 2D.